Hi, it's Rachel here with Courtly. Today I'm here with Lynn Simard, um, Consulting Executive for Copeland, Keebler and Wallace, the number one search firm in America. Um, today he's going to tell me a little bit about himself and what he does. So first of all, thank you so much for joining me today um, for this interview. Of course, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to start off just by kind of asking you um, about yourself and what it is that you do. Well, I started in the, in the tennis industry like many others, and uh, as I directed clubs for 35 years, I felt there was another need uh, that my skill set would take me. I, I thought the search business was a, was a great business, so I started a, a very small search firm on my own, and then I was fortunate enough to join, as you mentioned, Copeland, Keebler & Wallace, which is a, the number one search consulting and education firm within the private club industry. So we're primarily uh, involved with member-owned clubs, but we certainly do commercial clubs as well. Um, so we're pl I'm placing now um, directors of rackets, directors of fitness, and general managers as it pertains to clubs that are primarily oriented to, to racket sports. Okay, so when, when you're looking for these people to hire, what do you think are the most important traits of a general manager as well as racket sports director in the tennis industry? Well, there's a lot of traits, and our process, which is nice about as thorough a process that, that we do have, is we're able to, to bring out the best of, of, of what the qualities of each candidate offers. But I would say, generally speaking, you know, education is extremely okay. important. If it's a GM's position, are they a CCM? Are they a certified club manager? Are they involved with their association? Um, if it's to do with the rackets director, you know, what their certification is, master pro or, or lead pro. Um, and of course, that's sort of the, the groundwork that, that's necessary. Experience, of course, what clubs, what their pedigree is, what they have they dealt with clubs and, and jobs that are related to the, to the search that we're actually doing. Sure. And, and does it show a logical progression in their, in their, in their career? Is this something that, you know, that they're overqualified or they don't, they, there's, it's a reach for them? So it's a nice logical progression in their career because, as always, clubs want to have somebody that stays for a reasonable length sure. of time, not... not uh, Longevity. And unfortunately, the average for a club managed about 3.4 years. Really? So uh, those, are, those are two key things. And, of course, the X factor, when we get them into an interview situation, what their personality is like. Say, along We're with, hospitable. Right. <laughs> yeah. Along with certifications, what kind of personality traits would you say you would look for? You know, the hospitality industry is the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. we, we have to be super customer friendly. We have to have a great ability to react and have genuine interest in people. You know, whether it's the staff that we're dealing with on a daily basis or, or, or the membership. And so that, that, that outgoing personality is always a key. Sure. Um, okay, so are there any industry trends that you see and that you think are important for owners and directors to focus on? Yeah, I mean, without, without question, um, the trend now for, for all private clubs and commercial clubs is, is really how quickly you can take care of the needs of the members. So convenience is really the key in anything you do, whether it's uh, food and beverage experiences or or getting in, them into a rackets program? Is, is it something that requires them to sign up for eight or ten weeks, or is it something they can drop into and get the workout and, and, and get what they need in and out? And, and uh, convenience is the number one thing. Um, again, whether it's tennis, and, and this is the reason why fitness has, has come to all new, new levels. And what the vast majority of capital expenditures now in a club is being spent on is fitness because okay. of that quick hit they're they're in and in they're out yes. and uh, of course customer service is always one that's going to be there but the trend right now is convenience 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 okay yeah. yes um, is there anything else that you would like to add maybe take a couple seconds about maybe talking to us a little bit more about kind of um, the industry that you're in and, and maybe people that w would like a job in the management or tennis director well, you know, it's funny because at, at this Tom conference, we're working on a few very uh, interesting concepts that will will give a, a clearer picture or, or a pathway that somebody in, in the careers of, of rackets can, can focus on. 
So from certification to how they can take their next step up into the management field, and then if they even choose to go one step further into club management with, with the CMAA. So very shortly, there'll be a career path that's very well laid out for right. somebody trying to get into the industry, and that's one of the key challenges that we have. We've got uh, an industry that's, that's going to be fading for, for well, the average age of 54, um, you know, we need to replace these uh, jobs that are going to be coming available with, with young and, and educated people, and this will help that. So, you know, uh, we just have to do a great job in getting new people into the business. This career path will be explained and coming up very shortly, so we're excited about that. Great. Yeah, well, Glenn, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Um, a great industry leader. Um, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Well, Glenn, thank you so much for your